Human blood. This liquid connective tissue fills our arteries and veins, perfuses our every tissue, and delivers vital oxygen to our cells. It carries nutrients to our muscles and takes carbon dioxide away. It helps to fight disease and clots to close wounds. Without blood, tissues and organs will quickly die. So what's in this vital fluid? and how does it function in our bodies? Blood's liquid matrix is called plasma, and within this matrix, blood contains three main elements. Red blood cells, called erythrocytes, white blood cells, called leukocytes, and platelets. Blood plasma accounts for roughly 55% of blood's volume. It is a sticky liquid made primarily of water, but it is rich in dissolved substances. These can include nutrients obtained from the digestion of food, as well as the metabolic products of cellular activity. Among these nutrients are vitamins, minerals, and glucose, which will fuel cellular respiration and ATP production. Cellular respiration will also produce carbon dioxide, one of the most important metabolic wastes carried in blood plasma. Among blood's solid components, red blood cells, erythrocytes, are by far the most abundant, accounting for nearly 45% of blood's volume. A single milliliter of blood contains roughly 4 million red blood cells. These disc-shaped cells are packed full of the essential protein hemoglobin, whose iron-containing heme group gives the cells their red color. The primary role of hemoglobin is as an oxygen carrier. A hemoglobin molecule contains four heme groups, each of which has the ability to bind an oxygen molecule. This oxygen binding occurs in the lungs where oxygen concentrations are high and is reversed in the tissues of the body as oxygen leaves the blood to enter the cells. Any other molecule which competitively binds with hemoglobin, such as carbon monoxide, will have an extremely negative impact on the human body as it inhibits blood's ability to carry oxygen. White blood cells, or leukocytes, are another essential component of our blood. While they are far less abundant than red blood cells, white blood cells fill a critical role in the fight against infectious disease. Therefore, although they are produced in the red bone marrow, many white blood cells spend much of their life in the lymph nodes or at infection sites outside the blood vessels. Some white blood cells, called phagocytes, will engulf foreign particles such as invading microorganisms, while others produce antibodies to help destroy anything that might cause disease. These antibodies specifically bind to antigens, molecular identifying flags, that they recognize as foreign. Antibody binding leads to the eventual destruction of the flagged cells. Finally, the blood also contains platelets, which are fragments of much larger blood cells. Anytime a blood vessel is damaged, platelets move to the wound and stick together forming a small plug and initiating the process of clotting. This process prevents excess blood loss through the damaged vessel and will continue as the platelets secrete clotting factors which lead to the eventual production of the protein fibrin. Fibrin production results in the formation of a sticky net that catches any blood cells or platelets at the site of vessel damage and is therefore the final step of blood clotting. Every human being has blood that contains each of these three components. However, people often discuss the different blood types. What is it that varies between these different types? This answer takes us back to antibodies and antigens. Remember that antigens are like molecular flags that identify a cell. Even though they are not invaders, our own cells are also covered in antigens. However, we don't need to worry about our own cells being attacked by white blood cells because our body doesn't make antibodies to recognize the antigens on our own cells. That said, not all people have the same exact antigens on their blood cells. In fact, there are two main antigens that blood cells may present, A antigen and B antigen. If your blood cells present antigen A, your body won't make any antibodies to bind this antigen and destroy these cells. However, it will make antibodies against antigen B. Conversely, if your blood cells have antigen B, you can rest assured that you aren't also making antibodies against B. 
In some cases, blood cells have both antigens, A and B, and therefore do not produce antibodies against either. Others neither present A nor B, and therefore produce antibodies against both. Before you receive a blood transfusion, you must be sure that your body doesn't produce antibodies against any of the antigens present on the blood you will receive. This is easy for someone with blood type AB. After all, he doesn't make antibodies against either antigen and is therefore a universal acceptor. However, if your blood cells show no antigens, making you type O, blood that contains either antigen A or B would be attacked by your immune system. On the bright side, people with type O blood are universal donors because their blood contains no antigens to be attacked. Another potential blood surface antigen is RH factor. People with RH factor on their blood cells are said to be RH positive, and those without RH factor are said to be RH negative. Therefore, a full description of a person's blood includes their ABO type and their RH type. For example, a person might be AB positive or O negative. While blood is a relatively simple fluid, its importance to all elements of our life cannot be underestimated.